and why is to leave every person better than how I found them. My best friend was murdered by the janitor at our high school, and I was the character witness in her murder trial. How did that moment change your personality? And I knock on the door, and the dad answers, and I'm like, this is what I'm your daughter did. I'm here to fight did. your daughter. <laughs> and I'm here to fight your daughter. <laughs> what is Reiki? You know, I've always been in tune to people's energy. I've always thought it was a curse. Be astronomical with your goals. Like, it's okay. You have to think what it is that you want to leave behind. Uh, I was an athlete since I was four. What sport? Gymnastics on horses, vaulting. That was the only thing I ever did. Gym Explain what that is. Okay, so the horse goes in a circle, and then it's kind of like ice skating on the back of a horse. Uh, you can get up to three people on the horse at one time, and you do it to music. Is well, that the sport that you went to the Olympics yeah, on? 96, I went there, yes. Yeah, so Yeah, wow. horse vaulting. By the time I was eight, I got like what's called my bronze medal. By the time I was, I think... 12, I got my silver and I got my gold medal when I was, I want to say, 16 years old. What did that training regimen look like? So the best trainers were in Southern, or were in the Bay Area. So my parents would take me every weekend to the Bay. And sometimes I'd ride the BART and then I'd stay with families in the Bay Area. And then I had a coach there that uh, I got on a team with. And yeah, it was just, it was all my whole, it encompassed my whole life. Did you love it too? Oh, I Passion. loved it. Okay. I loved it because... My parents never pressured me. I was my own critic. Like I, it was all came from here. So that's why I really try to remember that with my kids in sports because I see parents like over the top out there. I'm like, let them internally drive it. You just be there to support. Like if they want it, I'll help you. What was an experience or two from your childhood that had an impact and shaped who you are today? Okay, so, okay, this is a good one because I like to tell the story. I was seventh or eighth grade, I rode the bus to school. And my mom and my grandma, we had a sign out front that said free manure. Because we had 65 horses, so we had a ton of manure. Right? Wow. Yeah. I mean, so okay. people liked it. You, know, you grow a garden. <laughs> and I'd have to stand by the sign. Well, I never thought anything of it. But these boys were like, oh, it's free manure, girl. Right? I mean, and it... First, it was like, I was like, huh, that's kind of clever, right? And then it just wouldn't stop. And oh, then no. you're at school, <laughs> and then they're calling you that, right? And I'm like, you guys, like... It's not funny anymore. Like, I, my parents have that sign because we have a lot of manure. And they're like, well, free manure, I'll stand by the free manure sign, blah, blah, blah. So I took it upon myself because, you know, back then our parents didn't care. It's not like now where, like, they would have went to the parents of those kids or, you know, it's such sure. a different parenting style mm -hmm. of parents now. My parents are like, that's your problem, right? So I'm like, okay, I'll fix my problem. I'll put a blanket over it, right? So every day I put a blanket over it. And so I'm like, no, you can't call me free manure girl. Well, my grandma's all... Why are you putting a blanket over my signage? I need people to know. <laughs> yeah, we got to get the manure <laughs> out. <laughs> so she made me take it off. So I had to like confront it and deal with it, you know, head on. And I always think about that because you hear that word bullying all the time, which I hate that word because to have a bully, you have to be a victim. You know, there has to be a victim for a bully. And if you don't give them the victim, then there's no bully. So I just confronted them. I'm like, I'm not going to allow them and what they're saying to affect me. Like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't define me because I stand, I'm going to stand proud next to it. I'm like, that's right. I live on a horse ranch. That's right. We do have free manure. You need some? Hmm. <laughs> and I just switched it. And then they, they, it wasn't fun for them. So to, you just straight, you just owned it when I they totally would try to it. tease you. You say, absolutely. Would you like some? Exactly. I'm like, huh. yeah. So I just, I didn't give them that power because that's what I was doing is I was giving them the power to make me upset. And then when I was a senior in high school, uh, this one's like, you know, a sad moment, but um, my best friend was murdered by the janitor at our high school. And I was the character witness in her murder trial. Their school district had hired a janitor who had just gotten out of prison. And he'd already murdered, killed two people. So he was on his third strike. This was his third strike. And it took five years to get him to go through trial. <clears throat> we had to do it in Santa Rosa. So now I'm like, I'm married, right? I'm a college graduate. And I have to go back and relive it in the courtroom. So mm. And so when I was brought in, her mom was there, and then me, and then the jury, and then the guy that freaking killed her was there. Oh. So yeah, I went up there and I just showed like the type of woman that she was going to be. I, I, I went up there, I'm like, I'm going to make her proud. I'm going to make every victim proud right now. I'm like, I'm going to fight for what's right over the dirt bags, you know. Mm. I had these girls one time, you're going to crack up. There was this photo 
of us, we were playing powder puff football. Our friend was going to go in the army. So we took pictures in our bikinis with, uh, with like footballs and for our, our friend going into the army and we put them on a shirt for him. Well, these girls that didn't like us got a hold of them and they blew them up real big and they wrote reward lost dogs and they put them in their mailbox, everybody's mailboxes, right? So I get one in my mailbox and I show my mom. My mom's like, drives me over to her house so I can fight her. I mean, cause that's what wow. you would do, right? I'm like, what else am I supposed to do, mom? Like I have to tell her she, this is not acceptable behavior, right? So my mom drops me off. Like there's no cell phones back then. Okay. And I knock on the door and the dad answers and I'm like, this is what I'm your daughter did. I'm here to fight did. your daughter. And I'm here to fight your daughter. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> and she wouldn't come out. And then I'm like, well, can I use your phone? Cause my mom dropped me off. I need to ride home. <laughs> You're a Reiki, is it a practitioner? Or? Yeah, I'm Reiki level two. Reiki level three is Reiki okay. master, which I should be soon in the okay. next couple of months. Yeah. Okay. So this is a genuine question for me and probably a yeah. lot. What is Reiki? Reiki is pull out any of the bad and bring in the good, like the universal power of, of goodness. Like we're going to bring. And so I'm just a, just a conduit of that. Okay. I'm going to help take so out. energy work for healing. For healing. Yeah. And mm-hmm. sometimes like we hold things, everyone holds things differently. Like I just recently worked on a man that I didn't know for Reiki. It was my first time. I usually work on women, right? Because that's just like the people I'm around. Sure. And it was so different. How he viewed himself was different. He viewed himself as like to be what he needed to be. He needed to be like a superhero type figure. But he, I, I needed him to be, I didn't need him. It, he was needing to be more humble on that and like fall on the sword and, and, and allow himself some vulnerability. And so I filled it with earth and leaves and um, grounding and, and I flushed it and I just allowed love you know, sometimes like some people, you know, people say, I need to go to the ocean and be grounded. Yes. Yeah. I get, I have to go to the you, river okay. all the time. I love this. Or I'm not grounded. Yes, I'm not okay. <laughs> yes. So like the mountains or mm-hmm. like my horses are like therapy. I just try to put in those things that, and that could be whatever he wants it to be, but I just try to bring in grounding mechanisms so that he could create some roots. And I love it because I don't know, I don't know what each person will call. And I just want to help. Like I'm working on my first person who's going through chemo next week. Oh, wow. So that's going to be a whole, I don't even know the person. So it'd be a whole new venture of like, how can we together, you know? Yeah, I'm all about that. Having yeah. just gone through the family stuff, like, it, sure, let's, at chemo, yeah. Western medicine, absolutely. But when you're really faced with something hard in life, yeah, I'll throw the kitchen sink at it. Seriously. You want to do Reiki? Can we do magnets? Yeah. Can we do cinetics? You want to hit hit me with sound? Like, yeah. what, let's do, I mean, whatever, water therapy. Oh, I, I love mean, that. Just me too. Whatever. So yeah. that's kind of your why, right? Your purpose. And why is to leave every person better than how I found them. Mm. That's my why. Expand on that a little bit. So just like when I leave you today, I hope that you feel rejuvenated or you feel inspired or you feel like you laugh if you think about me or you feel happy or um, yeah. you feel good. And how do you do that? Like think, make sure you say, like you said, say nice things, don't say negative things. How do you yeah. Put effort into making sure that people are lifted up around That's you. a good question. Because first of all, it works. It, oh, you are that thank person. You. So. Thank you so much. Um, I don't know. I'm still working on, I'm working on progress on that too. Because I have been in the people pleasing business for mm. 16 years in real estate, right? And I don't want, it's not that I want to meet every person and please them. It's just that as I'm learning that balance, right? Like, Because it's good to be a friend where you're like, what? I think you can require more from yourself. You know, it's okay to say those things that can make people feel uncomfortable or, hey, when this happened, I felt this way, but it, I'm not, I'm saying it in a way where I would, how I'd want someone to say it to me, you know, it's like always being at a higher level, mm-hmm. like being at that, I don't know, it might drive some people crazy. Speaking of energies and yeah. vibrations, for, I think the lowest vibration you can live at is talking smack yeah. about other people. I and, think that we mm-hmm. we shouldn't do that. The highest is gratitude, like we were talking oh, about. so good. I got to work on that too. And I say that to my it's kids. It's a practice. It it's, is. It doesn't just sink in right away. Intellectually repping out things that make you grateful. I'm grateful for my warm bed I woke up in. Mm-hmm. I'm grateful for the house that I live in to actually connecting with the feeling of gratitude. But once you build that muscle, whatever that is, Mm -hmm. you can induce it all day. You're having a bad time. You can just sit there and charge that through your whole body and feel amazing. I don't know. I just feel like our words are important. Do you have any input on how people can find their why? You know how I I see people every day. 
like in a job, right? That they chose and then they maybe feel stuck. And then, so it's okay if you're in a job that maybe you don't think defines you. It's okay because it's a means. That's what real estate is for me. It's a means for the other great things for me in my life because of the flexibility and the potential for opportunity and the diversity in real estate. It allows me to do the things that give me my why. So I don't have to be defined by that. And it sounds like you don't have to wait. And so that job could be a means to an end, if you would say, yeah. you don't have to wait till that end to find your why totally. you can start. How do you go about doing that? Like, I think the why is, you know, like my grandma, 93, and I watched her this weekend sit. She went and sat in a chair in, in the room and watched all of us at my son's birthday because who knows what she was thinking? I don't right. know. Maybe this is my Super last wise time. wise stuff. Here. Yeah, exactly. Maybe this is my last time at this birthday. Maybe this is, you know, she was observing us all. What would she be thinking I'm, what her why was, you know? Was it my, her why was leaving this legacy of these kids and these grandkids? And her great, it's her great grandkids because, you know, so there's a lot there. So I don't know. You, you have to think what it is that you want to, leave behind. One thing that I think is lacking when people look at changing something in their life or finding their why is they don't know what they want. And mm -hmm. I didn't know how difficult that was to sit down and create, say, a vision board or just to sit yeah. down and think, what do I want in life? What yeah. do I love in life? That's really hard. And then you yeah. add in a society with phones and tons mm -hmm. of distractions. So mm -hmm. that could be an issue for people too. If they don't know what they want, mm -hmm. how are they going to know what to build outside of the job that they might not be enjoying. Yes. So I think sitting down, being quiet, quiet yeah. and, and thinking about mm -hmm. what you want. Have you ever done this where you're like, okay, so say I've been wanting a horse barn, right? And I price it out, it's a hundred grand. And I'm like, I don't, I don't need to spend that kind of money for something. It's for me, right? I'm the one that rides the, horse, rides the horses. And then I was like, boom, why am I limiting myself? Like I can, ha I didn't mean I have to have it today. I can have it in 10 years. Like mm -hmm. why am I immediately, yes. that's just a simple thing, right? Well, that's a tangible thing. There, That thought process is happening to us in areas that is second nature and yes. we don't realize it. Totally. So I think it's important to see it on things yes. that obvious. Like, you know, so you're going, oh, I can't, I could never take that position at work. Why would you say that to yourself? Mm -hmm. Why would you block that? Maybe you can't take it today. Maybe it's six months. Maybe it's five years. But like that blocking, I was ticked at myself. I'm all, and, that, and then I purposefully went out and sought after like what type of barn I wanted. And then I put it on my vision board because mm. I was pissed at myself. I'm all, I can't believe I told myself no. Like I'm just allowing myself to be mediocre. And like that's not okay. Hmm. It's not okay. Like it's okay. You can be astronomical with your goals. Like it's okay. Anything you uh, want. You should be. Yeah. You really should be. I think a vision should be fantastical to where yes. when you think about it, it propels you through your day and yes. you'd be surprised how much of that, if not all of it can come true. Do you set time to be creative and dream like a morning meditation or Sometimes. anything like that? I will. I, I used to hate journaling and then my friends, like my really good little group of friends that are all realtors said, let's do that where you have like, you do those like eight things a day or six things a day. You know, that kind of like 75 hard. You have to, Journal every day, work out every day, drink a certain amount of water. Hmm, um, no, I okay, it's something like that. Discipline. Yeah, discipline. sometimes like, like like eight things. And I was like, I'll do them all. I'm not journaling. And they're like, <laughs> no, you're going to journal too. I'm like, no, I don't want to. I'm, I'm not a good journaler. And they're like, no, you're journaling too. I'm like, damn you. <laughs> so I journaled, right? And then I noticed every day the same words would come up. Like being intentional, that word intent. I was writing this word intentional, like all that I'm like, why am I writing that? Uh, and so I think that's a, mm. like a cool way to manifest because mm. it's your subconscious coming out. Just writing. Just writing. Anything else you want to leave with the audience to talk about? Uh, here, Okay, here's what I'd love to leave on. I have all these, you know, as we're moms and our kids have things and situations that pop up. Those are all things that, are good. They're like the tool for our tool bags, you know, like everything we need to learn in life, we can learn on that playground at school. You know, people worry about bullying and things like that. No, every day is like a playground. I don't know if a realtor is going to swing nicely on the swings with me. I don't know if someone's going to corner me in the corner. It, life's like that, right? Mm -hmm. So we learn these things at school. I know as parents, we all want to 
protect and control our kids. And, and then you find out, oh my gosh, my kid has ADD or my kid has this. It's all a superpower. If you change your mindset of that and empower your kids with that, um, you know, I'm sure we all had ADD. I'm, I'm 100% positive. I called it daydreaming mm-hmm. when I was growing up. <laughs> I'm like, what, what just happened? Why is everybody leaving the classroom? <laughs> I was daydreaming, right? So it's a superpower. It lets you think out of the box. And then if you are an in-the-boxer like my husband, like that's so cool. Like you're going to do amazing, great things too. Yeah. So I think instead of using things as a crutch, let's use it as a superpower. I like that. So that the good? things about yourself that are challenging or other people might say don't fit in society. How about embrace that? Embrace it Mm. and just own it Mm -hmm. and be proud of it because we're all unique and that's the best thing about us, right? Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Please leave a comment and subscribe. It really helps grow the channel so we can continue to get great guests. In the meantime, check out these two videos right here. Thank you. Thank you.